Podcast. I'm Robbie Ann McPherson on the East Coast. And I'm Amy Asberg on the West Coast. And without any ado, never mind further ado, <laughs> without any ado, we are getting right into part two of our interview with podcaster supreme David Yantuff. What's up, David? Am I the first official guest that you, you've ever had back twice? You are <laughs> you're the f- you're the first official guest, period. <laughs> Where God, I feel so special. You are. Oh, you are special. Like, can I tell you something based on someone who interviews five days a week of Bravo celebrities and reality stars? Podcasters make the best guests, really, because we have our, you know, unless something drastic happens, we know how our sound is. We're on time. We get how it works. Really. I've yeah. had podcasters on my show back when I started and they make the best guests. Really. Well, I, I can vouch for that because you are I a agree. fantastic guest. Yeah. And you know, the drill and all that. So that's cool. But I'll come on anytime, <gasps> anytime, because I, first of all, I can't talk on my show. So the thing is like, my show is not, a, first of all, I've become just an interviewer. Like my show is not about me. So like a lot of times I'll get criticism of like, you know, blah, 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 you're dry, whatever, which I'm not, as you can see. It's like, you know, like it, yes. it shouldn't be about me. It shouldn't be my style, which we kind of talked about last time is like, when you're on my show, it is your hour or hour and a half to tell your truth. Do I believe everybody? Like people will email me and be like, that person is full of shit. They're a fame whore. They're, ah, I got it. I got it. I agree. <laughs> but it's not, I'm not going to say that. And it's not my place to say it. So you tell your truth and I have my own opinion, which I keep to myself. And mm-hmm. I really, that's a 99, true journalist. That's yeah. A true and journalist, I actually. won't share, I won't share my opinion. You know, I had Candace Dillard on from, I don't know if you watch Royal Housewives of Potomac. She was at the oh, center yes, of the drama. Oh, yes, I do. Right. So she had the smack to mountain down with Monique. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Everyone hating, hating, hating so many nasty comments towards me. It's like, I'm not team Candace. I'm not team Monique. I'm team behind the velvet rope podcast with David Yontap. If Monique <laughs> wanted to turn around and come on my show 30 seconds after Candace, I would have sat down with Monique just as long as I did with Candace. Right. Candace wanted to come on. Haven't heard from Monique. Doesn't mean I'm team Candace. I have to say, in the real world, my interactions in dealing with Candace, I fucking love Candace as a person. She is wonderful. We bonded. I feel like she knows what she's doing for reality. It's like, I love Candace as a person. Whatever happens on the show, who egged who on, I'm not getting involved in that. It's like, it's not my job. So right. you're, that's you, really you my got it. Style. Yeah. And, and right. you're, I'm, I'm, I'm not biased. Even if I, and that's the other thing, people are like, I hate that person. Sometimes I feel like saying, I don't like them either. This is the last fucking person I wanted to talk to from this show. They're the one that said yes. Yeah. So here <laughs> they are. And it's for all the audience to decide what they feel. I don't, it's not like I like, I'm not going down the list and picking like, you know, do I like this person or not? Of course I get more excited by certain guests than others. Right, right. But I will interview even if I'm not excited about you because now we're five days a week and it's a job. <laughs> Because you got to have some content. Yeah. And there's people (laughs) that I've interviewed that have just fallen into my lap. Like I interviewed like Suki Hana from Love and from Love and Hip Hop. I don't particularly watch Love and Hip Hop. Mm -hmm. I took a moment. I had to research Suki Hana. Mind you, she's like 1.4 million Instagram followers. And she's been on the show and she's lovely. And it was just a great show. And then the show comes out. And then I start, I got numerous DMs from people that are like, you know, It's so great to see that someone like myself that looks like myself on your show. It's so great to see diversity. And I'm like, yeah, this is why I don't just stick to shows that I know or I like, you know. Right. You just, you have everyone on that wants to come on. I mean, within reason. It's not like we're an open door, but a major cast member who's like an internet sensation from Love and Hip Hop, well, that's on brand for our show. Sure. Yeah. and Absolutely. I got to, um, if anybody has not heard part one, you have to go back and listen. In fact, stop right now and just go back and listen to part one and then resume this right here. Because in part one, 
we cover a lot of uh, David's history and how he got to his podcast. Like, I mean, I thought that Vicki Gunvalson uh, interview was pretty jaw-dropping because even uh, after all those years on Real Housewives of Orange County, you know, they get guarded and stuff like that. But as you said, you're you know, your job is to just create a space where they can be themselves, right? And so, like you said, if they're a fame whore, if they're a bitch, if they're really nice, you know, you create that space for them and you know how to just let them kind of expose themselves. That's a real, real talent. Vicky was one of my, first of all, just what it's done for my show. It was one of my biggest, it went viral. It was on Wendy Williams. It was all over but not even that, like she said stuff about Lisa Rinna and then Lisa replied. <laughs> so now when you have a like, it's like I, cre I mean, this isn't my goal, but I created this press. I created this feud. Lisa Rinna and Vicky are now feuding because of me. So that's when you're like, well, I'm good at my job. Yeah. I and mean, that's not really my goal. My goal isn't to like take you down, but that's when it's like, but just in terms of like a person and interviews, the Vicky interview was one of my mm -hmm. favorite. Yeah. Now, I don't know where I'm going to be in two years. I mean, I'm not going to be out of business, but I do, it does keep me up at night. I'm not sure if everyone always, I don't know if people like the press they get. I, I don't know. I've, I've, emailed Vicky. I mean, it's a new interview. I've emailed Vicky since then, and I've not heard back. Not about the show. I, I, I distance myself from the worldwide, global, like Lisa Rinna is coming out. I, I pretended like I don't know about any of this press, even though I posted it on my Instagram for two weeks, night and day, about how I was on the Wendy show and all this other stuff. And every clip the time our podcast was mentioned. <laughs> but when I actually spoke to Vicky, I just emailed her about something totally unrelated. I haven't heard back yet. So I don't know. I'm always like, that's what keeps me up at night. But I just go back to two things. First of all, if you get global international headlines versus something that you said, mm -hmm. it's like you said this, not me. So I don't know how you're mad at me for what came out of your mouth. Yeah. And second, someone like Vicky, like this is your 14th year sweetheart, darling, love of my life. Like you're not a rookie. So if you don't, it's almost insulting. Like, do you think this is like a little mom and pop, like that no one's listening? So like if someone gets headlines and I'm not saying Vicky's mad, it's just, that's my guilty conscience where like, I'll reach out to someone. So I don't know, like when I start to try to get certain people back for a second time, I mean, I've had people back it, to me, my, the people that are in my team, my PR, Everyone is like, no, no, they love the press. Well, I can tell you I've been yelled at by certain housewives that don't love the headlines they've gotten from being on my show. But so I don't know. Like, so I don't care, but I care in a sense when it's someone like Vicky who like I truly love Vicky as a person. Like you're a wonderful woman, but at the same time, I don't regret it. Like I didn't do anything. Like I didn't try to take you down. Yeah. I asked you simple questions and you gave these answers. You said you were snubbed by Lisa Rinna. Lisa Rinna from Melrose Place, from Days of Our Lives. And you don't think that that's possibly going to be a thing in the press. Now, if they, I mean, that's the other thing. You, you talk about my interview style. I have learned over the year of doing my podcasts, this is going to sound, I mean, yes, it's very relaxed and, and then I go there, but I've learned, I know when you say something, I, it clicks. It's amazing to me how people don't know that. I have people call me and say, can you edit that out? And other than that, I don't edit, but I'm like every 100% of the time that I've been asked to edit something out, I have said to myself, sure, sweetheart, because whatever that person wants edited out isn't even close to what's about to fucking blow up <laughs> in the press. So I just don't, that is a sixth sense that I, besides the fact that you say I get people to open up, I know when you say something, it, it clicks in me and I'm like, holy shit, that's it. You know what, though? That is that's why not everybody is a great interviewer, because when you're interviewing celebrities, you you know, they 
they have an agenda and, and it's not their fault. I mean, it's their job, right? Like they have things to plug. They have, uh, you know, a, a, an image to enforce or change or whatever they're working on. And even, even in the case, as you said, like this feud with Lisa Renna, <clears throat> excuse me, and, um, and Vicky, it's hard to imagine that a seasoned pro like Vicky wouldn't realize that Lisa Renna would also want to jump on the opportunity to use this to, you know, go viral and generate a lot of stuff. Because I think these are two really savvy women, you know, obviously smart business women uh, and very successful. And so, yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I think it's, it's a little bit um, surprising. But that being said, um, that's also uh, the degree of which you're making them comfortable. Right. So they're just right. kind of lulled into this. Right. Thing. Yeah. And again, I, I will stand by it 100 percent of the time that no matter how guilty I feel, no matter how much I don't want to burn a bridge, the bottom line is you fucking said this. It is <laughs> your quote. When this is printed in Us Weekly on Wendy in People Magazine, I promise you, there is not one quote for a national magazine, Perez Hilton, all these magazines we've been in, that is incorrect. There's no printing Us Weekly and getting the quote wrong. It's 100% what you said. And they say in journalism, you know, we've worked for, Robin, we've worked for magazines. You know, they say, if you don't want us to print it, don't say it. Yeah. Or yeah. don't do yeah. it. We, we won't write about it if you don't do it. 100%. Are there times that I've been on other podcasts where something comes out and they use an audio on Instagram where I'm saying something and I'm like, oh, shit. Because, you know, listen, things come out later. You know, they come out yeah. later. You don't remember. What, and I'm like, shit, I have never said, oh, my God, what, take that down. <laughs> no, I, I listen and I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, David. Like, I mean, I wasn't drunk. And You're like, it's I said just it. like mm -hmm. I said it. So deal with whatever happens now. Right. It's my it, to me. It's like this is a therapy issue. This is a like you are playing victim. You need to look inside and get help and get therapy if you're living your life like this of blaming others because this is what you said. Mm -hmm. Period. What Thanks. I did with it. Any podcaster in this world as a business takes their episodes and gets press if you can that's how it's a business yeah we so, we, we don't we don't do that because we don't know how so we yeah <laughs> we just put these things out that. <laughs> that's a whole nother, it's a whole part of the business and so I don't know I don't know if people like you know so hopefully I'll just not get the reputation of like whatever you say no I mean it doesn't help that Tamara said a bunch of shit on my podcast and it went all over the world too so I could just picture she loves it though I feel like I they think so. love it I don't know about Vicky but I know Lisa Renna loves it she wants to be in the headlines she doesn't care how okay we're gonna talk about the 80s now okay okay <laughs> and we we covered in part one um Dallas which uh is just it an icon of a television show so make sure you check that out but if it's okay with you David I would like to move on to a subject that I could wax poetic about for like days and I've gotten in bar fights about which is Xanadu and you know what okay. I'm talking about right the the quality of the movie why it's lovable um, you know and all this kind of stuff and um, and also the soundtrack. I mean, there's so much to unpack with with uh, all the things that Xanadu is. So I'm just going to ask you a broad question. Okay. Um, which is, where were you the first time you saw Xanadu? Like, actually, that was a really specific question, wasn't it? I wish that I knew that answer. <laughs> Maybe with your grandmother. Maybe you guys watched it together. That Well, that was Dallas. I mean, I can tell you for sure that I saw Grease in a movie theater. I saw Jaws in a movie theater. Yeah. I don't know. I don't 1980, know. 1980, you guys. It was August 8th, 1980. It was really I feel so like I think didn't, about that. I feel like I didn't see it in the movie theater. I, I don't know why. I feel like I didn't. So I don't know where I was when I first saw it, really. So uh, can, can you just... 
the love though, the Xanadu love, like how did that grow in you? I mean, I think it was all related. Like for me, you know, it goes back to ONJ. Would I have watched Xanadu if it wasn't for ONJ? I right. don't know. Ooh. Right. I don't A beauty. Know. Right. She... But like she came upon our lives th- mm-hmm. from my life through Greece. I know she has a life before that, but ever since then. And then don't forget, this was the same time. I don't know the year, but this was the same time that Totally Hot, Olivia Totally Hot came out. Right. Remember that CD? Yeah. Where she's dressed in all. So it was like the trifecta of like the Grease soundtrack, Olivia Totally Hot, and the Xanadu soundtrack. I don't know the year of Totally Hot, but it was all around the same time. So it was like, this is just music for weeks and months. Right, right. So you know, it was Olivia plus the music. Yeah, and Gene Kelly, and th- there. Uh, I mean, Ooh, totally hot came out in '78 on vinyl. That makes so sense. Yeah, that makes so it's right around the same time. But she she did a great job though. When okay, she's like good Sandy, and that was kind mm-hmm. of in line with her image from you know from her initial uh have you never been mellow you know and then she goes on yeah. to do grease right and then she makes the hot sandy transition and then it was almost like she was hot olivia like after that right i mean i assume someone said like you better capitalize on this and your next cd needs to be because i mean that cover that was hot sandy like right right, right after i think it came out right after grease or around then yeah and it's really the only Olivia CD per se in and of itself that I play on rotation. Like, you know, like besides greatest hits, like I play the totally hot all the time. It looked like she was wearing like a black members only jacket on that or something. It was like all black. Yeah. And she had kind of a short hair, like leaning up against like 80s marble. Yeah. 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 And now what was And it was like a scribbled word, Olivia. Remind me the track list name of, uh, of totally hot. Was that right, what was the list, honey? Hold on a minute. It's like, oh give me all your loving. There. Give me all your loving. I'm looking at it right now. Here, I mean, it's in my. Please don't keep me waiting. Dancing round and round. Talk yeah. to me. Deeper than night. Deeper Wild than time. the night. Mm-hmm. A little more love. That was oh, a hit. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. Lo- yeah, that was the Never monster hit, right? And totally hot. Yeah. You, you, you like know these. Thank you. you know these songs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I. I remember that whole um and i remember the video that she 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 is a super talent and so she gets this movie xanadu and um and i can just offer this and then and then david you tell me tell me if you can relate or you have a different take but when i watch xanadu now i i do remember seeing it in the theater And part of my whole thing was um, I was always a huge fan of Electric Light Orchestra and Gene Kelly. So to me, it was like, oh, my God. You know, so I I go, you know, I was a little kid. My mom gave me 20 bucks. I went to the theater by myself. So I I watched this movie and it was like all of my favorite things mushed together, you know, roller disco and Olivia Newton-John, all these things. But the movie has, to me, such a heart like there's just this warm fuzzy and this you care so much about the characters in it and I know I know it's not like a you know great movie technically but I I don't know what makes a great movie you know like I don't know tell you tell me what what do you think today when you watch it well I so I met I mean I went to a thing in Florida I mean here we are talking about South Fork and me going like in 2009 yeah 2019 they did three nights in florida of a grease sing-along and movie outside but then there was a meet and greet with john travolta and olivia newton john so i went all three nights and when i say florida i don't mean when okay here when i bought the tickets i thought it was like in florida outside at a theater all three nights i bought three nights and then like Weeks, I mean, weeks later, I was like, wait a second, wait a second. This isn't one location in Florida. This is like Jacksonville, West Palm Beach. It was three different <laughs> locations. So I had to <laughs> travel all over Florida. I'm like, it's too late now. And it was three nights. 
And, you know, three nights of hanging out with John Travolta and Olivia and John, so to speak. Were they dreamy, both of them? Well, she also wasn't doing so well, which you knew at the time. So mm-hmm. it was like she, she stayed seated and it was like, you know, during the picture, they're like, you can put your arm around her, quote unquote, but just don't touch her. You know, she wasn't she didn't seem great. So but she's wonderful, you know, and she like I think she's you know, she's in on the joke that it was a critically panned movie, which has now become a cult classic. Yeah, but this is what I get in the bar fights I about. Love it. Like, I mean, I love it. It's a great movie. Yeah, I mean, the only problem that I really had with the movie was the the audio and and like the dubbing of the voices and stuff. It that wasn't so great. That was kind of low budget. But when you look at in context at the time, and you look at the special effects, and then in the middle of the movie, she does that solo song. You know, a miracle is all you need. And that is a, that's like a three and a half minute single tracking shot. Like it's, there's no edit. It's to be respected. It it just slowly moves, um, zooms in on her and she just sings it. And if you watch the movie in a big screen theater, um, I saw it a couple years ago, they did like a reissue. It is, it's really a mm-hmm. stunning movie to watch. And okay, the effects are kind of hokey, but that's because it was 1980. And so I, I always bristle at, uh, at the whole critic bomb thing because what is it supposed to be? It's supposed to be, you know, this whole roller disco. That's the 80s. Yeah, like this extravaganza. And that's what it was. And, and you know what? It was actually, it was kind of a remake or it was the plot of the film Down to Earth from 1947 that was used as the basis for it it was like an old Rita Hayworth film oh i didn't know huh. that people love that film i never so i never yeah, they i took never it knew from that. that well they did a put many many um you know tube tops and roller skates in so you didn't recognize it <laughs> but also However, it's like you know, it's you know look at the music from the 80s the music itself if you i mean it holds up for me it's great but like the music for the 80s makes no sense like if you (laughs) focus on it i'm not talking about like all the major hits a lot of the major hits didn't make sense but like the one duran made no sense i know that i love duran duran they're like in my top five oh my gosh john taylor yeah but like we love you know what i mean like think about all those strange just songs Mm -hmm. like the reflex like i I still don't understand the reflex and like to Commissar and Rock Me Amadeus and right. just oh my gosh I don't even know safety what else dance. <laughs> yeah like <laughs> safety just dance what songs that made no sense but right. yet but why they worked really like quick Carl is because because now we're looking and they do this with those commercials for um, medicines that are like the side effects are you're about to drop dead you're looking at the commercial <laughs> and their visual is taking over and you're not really listening. And that's what they were banking on in the 80s with all those videos. You're like looking at Duran Duran on this yacht sailing and you're, you're not listening like, hey, yeah. the words make absolutely no sense. Like, <laughs> you're looking at John Taylor. You're looking at John Taylor and you're like, wait a second. So you're not really, I, I feel like the videos are what made it not matter that the song didn't make sense. I love right. this segue. I love this segue. Okay, so so David, um, in the 80s, what um well no let's let's move forward okay you know how there's this big retro movement in the late 90s yes. even and in the early 2000s were, were were there any like 80s clubs that you would go to or can you reminisce about uh you know some even some clubs in the 80s because the club music it was dance music right it was all like it made you move so tell me about um your your experience with 12 inch singles oh <laughs> you know I was into that, but I was more into just like, you know, the mainstream pop, like this is the album and I don't need the remix. I would rather just go on and get more new music. Really? Well, okay. Some of your top I was collecting albums. music. I mean, you know, it was all about, I mean, geez, like if I didn't realize I was gay at this point through, I mean, the <laughs> Are you going to see Erasure? Are you going to see well, Erasure in no, the order right I, now? No, but that's very gay music too. But it was really for me, like, I mean, still is all about Madonna. Madonna's uh, the queen. Madonna. But also, like, I was like Madonna, Prince, Cindy Lauper, mm-hmm. 
Tina Turner, Duran Duran. That's all gay music. So, okay, so you weren't like a That's club, music, you weren't a club yeah. kid. You weren't like in the 80s club music. Not really. And like, I like the alternative. Like, I love like Depeche Mode, Erasure, Pet Shop Boys, but it was more like the real stuff for me was the pop. It was like Madonna, Prince, Cindy Lauper. Yeah. So okay. So, like, top and, so fun. and did you, but, did you, you know, like, in my it, old, oh, sorry. as I went on, it was more like Pet Shop Boys, Depeche, but I wasn't like goth. Like mood right. music, like the cure. I, I I love all that, but to really have me go absolutely ballistic and freak out, it was like <laughs> Madonna, Prince, Cindy Lauper, Culture Club, yeah. yes, in excess. Oh, the Go Go's. I mean, I still oh. I've seen, right the Go Go's. This was these were my things. I'm gonna say that was 1984 was the year for all of those things at once. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah pick that year. yeah that was kind yeah. of you're right that was like a vortex. When you're, what are you listening? Are you listening on a Walkman, a Boombox, a? <laughs> huh. How do you get your I, tunes? I think the radio was mostly in the car. I feel like I've never been, even now, I'm never like a listen to the radio. It's more like you know, MTV. Yeah. And then buy what I want, you know, not really listen to the radio, but probably then, yeah, like a home stereo or like a Walkman with a cassette okay. as opposed to a boombox. It was like a home stereo, which stayed, you know, base, you know, stayed in its base in my room and like a Walkman. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, but never really the radio, maybe like, you know, Sunday's top 40, like the countdown. Casey I Kasem. Love those. Yeah. Love but them. it was like, okay, this is the music from MTV I like, and now I'm going to buy the tape or the, it gave you a good album. sampling. It was a good sampling. Yeah. Yeah. And do you remember where you were the first time you heard Madonna? No, but I would venture to say, I can tell you, I didn't get into Madonna the first album. It was Like a Virgin. I mean, I imagine for me, it was the Like a Virgin video with the lion. And Ooh. then I went out and bought Like a Virgin. And then I was like, well, why haven't I bought the first album? <laughs> and then I did. And then I was like, now this is my obsession in life. Right. But I mean, I'm I'm 90% sure it was the Like a Virgin video, not necessarily like on the radio. It was such a fierce video though, Rob, because she uh, did a freeze frame when her necklaces were out and something about that. And then that she kind of ducked before she went in yeah. the, the poofy All sleeves the and the lion. Bracelets. Oh, and then you go and you find like the video for Lucky Star, and then that was more Ooh. Virgin bracelets. It was all good, but it was just. Did you I try to do that dance? Did you try to learn the Lucky Star dance in I your did house? Not. I did not. Rob, did you? Hell no! I'm a klutz. I couldn't do that. Girl, I, you I know tried what? I, I wait. I have to amend that statement. I probably, right. I probably did like in private, and you know thought I was so fly, but I mean, I, and then you kind of ducked down at the end and went like this, you know, yeah. like with your, your chin and, on your, yeah. yeah. I mean, when people ask me like, what are my favorite Madonna, you know, CDs. And I mean, we're talking up through the most recent Madam X, like a, like, like a virgin is always like, I'm trying to think that might be my number two two or in my number one it's it's up there it's just that whole cd i love mm -hmm. what I was love dress too. you up what, what album was dress that you up? was that, that yeah was that was like oh, the you guys side. love that um i'm sure you've seen her her shows right how many times have you seen her in concert oh my god like everything a million times even madam x i saw a million times. how was the madam x show way 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 better than i thought it would be Oh, here's 80s for you. I talked last time about how Taylor Taylor Dane was on my show. I interviewed Carlton w Wilborn. It's not out yet. One of the lead dancers from Blonde Ambition. Maybe this is more 90s, but we did a special two-part. It's coming out soon. So he must just... dish a lot on Madonna, right? Yeah, we get, we get, he was a good booking and we, we, we go there. I've tried to book Christopher Ciccone, her brother, mm -hmm. but that has yet to happen. That has yet to happen. Christopher, if you're listening, please go on David's show. 
I mean, listen, when you come on my show, I get how Hollywood and entertainment works. Like you, you, you're going to get your chance to plug. Like Christopher has a real business for 10 minutes at the end where it's not just a minute, you will plug away your real business and everything else you've done. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Carlton. Now he's a life coach. Sure. I'm sure that you are here today, Carlton, knowing what I'm going to talk about, but I'm sure you're also here for your own selfish reasons that you want to plug the fact that you're a life coach and you know, you're an ex dancer and you're reformed it. Absolutely. We're not editing that out. You plug away, sweetie. After you it sit is here, it's mutually beneficial. Right. Like you sit there for an hour and a half and answer all of my nuanced questions about me. I mean, we're talking questions like, okay, so you're going from place to place. Like, are you on the private jet with her? Are you like writing like in the back of the bus? Like, how are you treated? Oh, like, my God. I can't listen, wait for I this. Have, it's I not even this. like I have shady questions. I have the questions that everybody really wants to know. Let's cut through the bullshit. Yeah. These are the questions of what the human race wants to know happened. Right, right. That's right. I actually remember him because I saw the tour in Toronto. And uh, that was the first time I'd ever seen her in concert. So that was 1990, I think. And she, I was blown away by how warm she is in concert and how much she connects with the audience. I kind of, I guess I kind of half expected her to be, you know, really good, polished and everything else. But I didn't, I was totally unprepared for how like I was in the fifth row, which was crazy. And so I saw her pretty close up and I mean, she, she just glowed. She radiated like love and all this crazy stuff that you just wouldn't expect. Like I was thinking that, you know, she was, she was going to be like the express yourself Madonna, you know, and kind of distant or guarded or whatever. Totally not the case. And what a show. Oh my God. I think for her, like just having seen her so many times, it's kind of like, yeah, it has to be perfect and all, but I think, I mean, I think I'm kind of the same way. I mean, I'm not comparing myself to Madonna. Like I don't have that ego, but it's like you, you, it's a, it's a business. And I think like her thoughts are, I will give you everything of me when I'm here yeah. on stage because yeah. that's Madonna. Don't wait outside for me. I mean, you're not going to get anywhere near her now, but it's kind of like, don't wait outside there's no pictures. There's no signing anything. There's no, you know, we're not checking the DMs. I'm not getting back to you. It's just like, but when I'm on stage, I will give you everything and I'm here and just exploit me, take me in, have me. I'm, I'm yours. Yeah. This is, so That's I mean, a great way I, to put you, it. You can't get mad at that. No, no, because that's, you know, what? Quality. That's she how it's works supposed hard. to work. Yeah, yeah, I mean, to me, that that is how it's supposed to work. And when you're in the audience, all that you are asking for is, you know, be be this person right now for me on stage. Like, play the songs yeah. and be, you know, the fabulousness that is you and all that. And so what was your favorite tour? I mean, I would probably have to say either... Okay, maybe a three-way tie, just without overthinking it. I would say the Virgin tour way back with the Beastie Boys opening where they got booed off stage. I mean, that's what everyone, if you do, if you read Iconic, about it, yeah. that's right. And that's what it says, but it it's true. Like they got booed off the stage. Mm -hmm. And then Confessions was so great. Confessions on a dance floor. Yes. It was like when Madonna... I mean, this is not, I'm not age shaming because I mean, I'm like old, you know, like everyone is, but it's when Madonna like still could be Madonna and was just doing things. She was at a certain age where she shouldn't have been able to do any of what she was doing, but it was a young enough age. I don't know. I'd have to look it up like forties, fifties, where you could still do insane things like yeah. jump. And I mean, the things she was doing, which, you know, she can't do these things anymore, which is fine that is not age shaming but that was just like wow like you're a insane this is what like a 19 year old should be able to do and i mean madam x she took it back to these small theaters and didn't really do a tour did like a residency in brooklyn a residency in chicago and like at first you're like i don't know about this but it was so like 
it really was what she described it as. It was like seeing a Broadway play. It's like very mm-hmm. intimate, it sounds with like. With Madonna, yeah. And it was like a Broadway play. Like it was, because you're there for two weeks or three weeks. Yeah. So her shows are always involved, but it really was like it took you on a journey. And so Madam X, like a virgin, I mean, first and last and like the middle, like we're covering all bases <laughs> here. I, I wished I, uh, the Madam X show didn't come anywhere near me. I wished I would have had the opportunity. I've, I've seen her uh, three, three times. And um, I, I thought that the Drowned World Tour was just absolutely stunning and so creative. And that was my favorite uh, like presentation of the songs, you know, and she That's she was just line. at her peak. Yeah, and you know, it's kind of weird. The I had t- a ticket to see Madonna on September 11th, 2001. Oh that gosh. was the show that I was going to. It was in LA. And, um, and obviously she canceled the show. And so she moved that show um, to the last, like, I think she did five nights or something in LA. So they you know, juggled the schedule around and it ended up being the last of the tour. And, um, you know, on the Drown World Tour, how she comes out of the mist on that like treadmill thing. And in all the, all the shows she had been wearing like a tartan skirt, like a kilt. But Mm -hmm. on this, on this, uh, particular gig, she came out of the mist with a kilt made out of the American flag. And Mm -hmm. like the place went crazy like when she just emerged out of the mist because you know how it was right after september 11th right nobody knew what was next you know everyone Mm -hmm. was scared and i and i the show started like two hours late because of the um extra security and all this crazy stuff but man she just came out of there and she had that stance she was defiant she was like i am not gonna let this stop me I am Madonna, bitch. Get out of my way. Yeah. I'm going to entertain you guys for the next two hours. You know, I got this. It was the coolest concert moment ever. I, I just, See? I will forever be grateful for for her saying, um, "I am going on with this show." Now, for all I know, she did it because she didn't want to lose the, <laughs> you know, the guarantees or who knows what. But I know that it took some guts for her to do that at that time, and that was killer. Just killer. Such a badass. It's a good show. It's yeah. a good show. Yeah. And and um her the her album Rebel Heart. I love that, that album. Good, that's a good one too. Yeah. I don't get the I don't get the um the hate right now. You know, I know she kind of gets loopy on social media and stuff, but I I just I think she's still producing amazing music and just because it's not, you know, the in thing, right? Well, that's the thing it won't sell, but like you know who still produces great music is Duran Duran. They're oh, last yeah. oh. all the latest and apparently there's new music coming this year. Yeah. Yeah. But Duran Duran, like their latest like last album 2, 3, 4, all of them are phenomenal. It's just as good as the beginning stuff. It will never sell, which is okay. I mean, it sells. I mean, I also am a huge fan of like Blondie. I've seen Blondie a million times. Debbie Harry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love I love Blondie too. A that, lot of these people they put out great new music. Yeah, Blondie's last album is really really good. Yeah, it, it was. Great. This is this is just a it's a bone of contention I have with um, the way that music has been sold for so long, right? Like there's labels and marketing and a lot of artists get sort of artificially huge because the machine is behind them. Then mm-hmm. once the machine moves on and they go Good to the next point. best thing, everyone thinks they're quote unquote over, but like they're not over, you know, they're just not part of the machine anymore. So they're still creating great music. You just kind of have to find it and maybe they're not selling out, you know, stadiums anymore, but since when does that count as as how uh you know the measure of art right like who cares i like that they still exist like it just makes me happy that in the background duran duran is still playing music i'm just happy about yeah, that. yeah. and like still fucking great right? oh my god they're so good live can, can you can you get john taylor on your show and then tell us where he is yeah <laughs> wouldn't that be nice <laughs> we're wouldn't joking nice? we're kidding i mean yeah he probably I smells haven't... like really good I need to name drop Taylor Dane and be like, I've had her on. So all of the rest of you just get in line. 
tell it to my heart. I'm going to get my crimping iron out just just to celebrate the fact that you've had Taylor Dane on there. I'm, and I'm going to crimp just the front of my hair, by the way, and leave the rest straight. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, a, I'm a little bit disappointed, though, that she wasn't um, lovable. She's like, she's OK. I mean, I, I think if you. This sounds fun to listen to, like, kind of a. I mean, a lot of people. Shade. Yeah, like a lot of people didn't pick up on it. Some people that listen to my podcast every day were like, was she rude to you? But mind you, they've said that about other people, too. Mm -hmm. They're just usually right. She wasn't the rudest out of all my guests who have been rude. She wasn't the Who is the rudest? Oh, I want to know who's the rude. He's not going to tell us. He's going to tell us us. off air. I I want to know who's the most rude. It's like there are different degrees of rudeness. I mean, I would say one or two housewives I had a moment with. Really? Not surprising. Well, I mean, it's never like a fight. It's just kind of like if you don't want to be here, then don't do it. So it's like in a way I'm like, I'm happy. I'm happy you're doing it. But and I don't mind. But the audience has pointed out on certain occasions like one person cooked like I think a full breakfast while we were chatting. I mean, (laughs) pots and pans. (laughs) Planking and eating food. I'm wow. Sorry. Which I didn't think was that obvious on the audio, but I mean, apparently it was. But, but really, you couldn't just not do that for, you know, an hour? Right. Right. And like, someone else. That's just disrespectful. I'm yeah. Sorry. And someone else yawned so many times. Now, I did edit. This is one of the times I edited, but apparently I didn't get all of the yawns. And. <laughs> So just the one that was on the How air. How do you yawn? What does a yawn sound like? like? <sighs> <laughs> like when you're talking, and, your voice is trailing off. <laughs> and then it's like, well, now that I'm editing that out, I'm also going to edit out the like, is this the last question? Uh, so I decided to edit that out too. So like just certain people, it's like, okay. But then you're like, all right, well, I mean, you didn't have to be here. And you said yes. And so I guess I'm like lucky that you're even here. Right. I mean, listen, I, the show goes on. Like, if I book you and you're a name, even if it's bad, it's not like it's ending up on the, I'm going to put it out. Have you, so speaking of all this, have you contacted Madonna's people to interview her? Because wouldn't she be the ultimate get? Oh my God. Yeah, her or Cher. I would take Cher <gasps> just as take Cher. Madonna. Oh my God. We have not covered Cher. We need to talk about Cher oh. immediately. Right I've now. met Cher four times. Oh my God. Tell me everything. I mean, we could do a whole show just on Cher. I mean, Cher is amazing. You know, she's the, she's what people say Madonna should be. It's not age shaming. Like, you know, it is, there is something about Madonna that she is not, I, I have no problem with it, but she's not embracing her just like almost icon status the way a like Cher or Diana Ross Yeah, is. yeah, Cher owns that shit. She just Yeah, owns I mean, it. Cher is Cher. Cher is just, I mean, I saw the Cher show on Broadway. Cher is just, if you meet Cher, she's what you think. It's, it's Cher. Okay, like, she's I have very some pointed Cher. questions though. She's because... very Cher. I mean, I didn't hang out with her, but I've met her in Vegas four times. Like I did the meet and greet. Okay. Uh, and and so when what what, what era was this? What Shara? What this was uh, probably like four years in a row, like 2018, 19, no, like 2016, 17, 18, 19, something like that. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's like, what, four years in a row. I saw her tour, uh, the last tour that she did, which is mind blowing. And what struck me was I mean, you do the math, right? And you know how old she is. She is so vibrant. And um, and crazy. So when you meet her, um, I- is she one of those people that just has that otherworldly star aura where it's just like you don't even know what it is? Yes. Like I always say this, like, you know, now because of what I do and I talk to all these people five days a week, like I have a completely different relationship to fame, celebrity. Right. I, it really, really like I don't care who you are. Mm-hmm. It's really hard for me to get like just like, yeah, like I don't understand what's going on. But having met Cher four times, I mean, every every time, I mean, the third time I lost it and she's just like, <laughs> I, like, you've met me two other times. Like, why now? 
I mean, she doesn't really want you to lose it, but I did. She, yes, she's just, you're like, well, part of it is like you're having an out of body experience. Like I don't have the like, you're a celebrity and I'm not. It's more like what you still, like what you are in the world. Yeah. Like you're just like you're like the concept of share just in and of itself is so unbelievable. But yeah, like when you're with her, you're talking to share. Like there's no, it's not like, oh, let me change into sweats and now I'm not share and I look different. I mean, you know, even when she did one of the pictures was in a very casual outfit. They're all on my Instagram. It's like all four years, you just swipe. But it's still like share. So she's share esque the mannerisms, the voice. It's like you are standing there. There's no other way that you can describe it. You're talking to share. So right. it is that like out of this world, like I don't even understand what's going on right now. There needs to be a new adjective to describe share because there yes. is not one presently. You in know addiction. what? I have one. It's what share. It? It's a share. Okay. Like that's yeah. it. Yeah. Like that is so sh- like, and and right. you know what? I have to point People this know out. What you mean too? Um. So so we can see each other, but we see each other. So I can see Amy and I can see David and David. While you're talking about share, like um. You guys, you you go to his Instagram. You can see what he looks like. But he has these big, beautiful blue eyes. And his whole face is, like, lighting up. Like, it's so... You can it's tell how much... Yeah, yeah. You can it's tell that you had these great experiences. And so... Could you tell, like, did she smell good? She looks like she smells really good. Like, some exotic smelled perfume. Good. It smelled good. And I have to say, like, you know, you get, I, like I told you, I do all these like celebrity meet and greets and whatever, like, you know, there's varying degrees when you're not using your phone, people's professional photographers. I don't know where Cher has found her team, but all four pictures, it's like, you know, you meet someone four times, you have one good picture. That's great. And two that are okay. And one that's no. All for, I forget about her. I look phenomenal in all four pictures. She looks, it's like whoever is taking these pictures, it's like, there are like four pictures where you're like, wow, she looks great. I look great. I don't know how you got like well, this. Well, her magic drifted on to you. I feel. You're just waiting for <laughs> right. like the like, oh, I don't want to go back one more time because it, the picture is going to be, be every time. It's like the best picture ever. So. Wow. And, and the... It's, like up close even. So she looks great and vibrant and everything up close even. And she mixes it up because like I have pictures with dark hair. I have pictures with the blonde hair. Each time you're like, God, please don't be wearing the same thing. Nope. Different. So like, you know, you get, you get four variety pictures. of Yeah. See now Now that is even share. Like, you know, celebrities, they do the meet and greets and they're literally, you could put a piece of cardboard there. They're just like, oh my God, okay. But no, not Cher. Cher Cher has wardrobe changes. She has like fly people taking pictures so that everything looks good. I love it. You know, you're not getting, you know, you're not getting, you know, 15 minutes with Cher, but you have that experience and it's a real conversation and it's just, it's share. Yeah. Like, like she's nothing. gracious enough to give you your moment. Yeah. And you know, you're standing next to share. So like, you can't really say I, you know, what do you expect? One minute is more than you could. She could say, I'm never doing this again, which might possibly be the case now that we have COVID in the world. Like, I don't know why any celebrity would ever do a meet and greet again. That's just me. I mean, I hope I'm wrong, but this may never happen again. You know, like whether Cher performs in Vegas or not, there may never be. And it's very easy to just cut the meet and greets out and be like, no, thank you. I I don't need the extra. And she actually donates the money from it. Oh, oh, that's cool. That's so So, Cher. That's so Cher. That's lovely. But I mean, you know, I don't know. So now that this new world exists, I'm just like, God, we had it good. I mean, we had it good in a lot of ways, but I'm not sure there's going to be a meet and greet with Cher anytime soon. Yeah, I I think you're right. I think that at least for the foreseeable near future, um, the I I did a the only meet and greet I've ever really done was um, I'm a I'm a complete and utter sticks fanatic. Like I love sticks. I. I have the I have the sticks meet and greet. Oh, <gasps> you do? What when did you meet them? They did like a joint thing. It was sticks, Joan Jet, not meet and greet with Joan Jet. Sticks, Joan Jet, and someone else. 
And I did this. Joan Jett doesn't do a meet and greet because she had a stalker. Oh, oh, that's. Scary. I would love a Joan Jett meet and greet, but I did. I don't know when I did a sticks meet and greet, but I did. Weren't they fun and adorable and nice? Like I, I just yeah. love them. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean like they're not like my favorite, but their music. They're one of those bands where I'm like, why am I going to this concert and why am I doing this meet and greet? And then when you look at the music, like a week before you're like, Oh, wow. I know all these songs. Right. I didn't think I knew all these songs. Yeah. And so, then they play and they just blow the doors off. The yeah. Like, I, I, my, right. my love, I, they're, they're my Madonna. Like I, I could talk Derek. about them for she 40 loves. years. Yeah. No, yeah. it's crazy. Really? But okay. I was, I was just thinking about what you said uh, the other day because I have, okay, this is embarrassing in a certain way, but I have the what? meet and greet picture on my freaking refrigerator with the ticket. You know, like that's I don't know, cute. I, I love there. that because um, uh, you they asked you to do like a funny thing, and I said I said okay, what if we did a kick line? So I have a picture of me doing a kick line with sticks, and it's like my favorite I thing on planet Earth. So I was, but I was looking at it, and I was thinking of the exact same thing you said. Like, God, I, I mean, how could they ever do that? Uh, you know, and risk. Um, it, you know, what are you going to stand there with masks on? Like, it just, it isn't going to work ever again. If I were a celebrity, I wouldn't do it for, yeah. I mean, first of all, I don't think we're having concerts for a long time. Yeah. If ever, but that's a whole nother story. Like, I think people are just in their own, like last year, because I had a lot of tickets to concerts. It was like everything in March was like rescheduled to June. You're like, okay. Then June became September. Now it's like September become like, there's no concerts in like, April. Like, I just think I have friends that are like, oh, you know, we're going to do this in May. And I'm like, the concert's not happening in May, sweetie. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm just trying to be a realist. It's just not happening. Right. But even if concerts happen, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't go do a meet and greet if I were. I mean, I, I would do it as a person. But if I were a celebrity, I would just be like, uh, cut that out of the show. No, thanks. Yeah. Well, for now. It's, for now. Yeah. It. I mean, we'll 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 see or. Who knows where it's all going to go. Um, and so I'm looking at, at the clock and like, I can't even believe it, but we are almost out of time again for part two. But before we let you go, yes. I want to know. Um, I'll come back. I'll come back. Oh, my God. I'm so happy. Um, OK, so you, so we, we know. Well, he says he's coming back. <laughs> no, no, no. Really. <laughs> um, but I so other than Madonna. Who is a guest that you are just dying to have on the air for whatever reason? Just, you know, who is like, you can't wait to get them on the show. Madonna and Cher would be at the top of the list. But in reality, no pun intended, like, because neither of them will be coming on my show. I mean, I would love from like the reality world to have on, which also is not happening. Like, I, I would take a Lisa Rinna. I'd love to have Lisa Rinna on. No, just, but you know, why, like why do you the, think it's not going to happen, though? Why wouldn't she come on your yeah, show? She'd totally come on your show. Because some people just don't do podcasts. She doesn't really do podcasts. Oh, well, you know, that's but so from like the Bravo worlds of all these people I talk to or reality world. She would be towards the top. Yeah, that's short sighted, though. I think uh, celebrities out there, you know, um, podcasts are are an extraordinary vehicle for celebrities. And, you know, because the stuff goes viral. So. I think when Lisa gets out of the news, though, she's going to if anything dips for Lisa Renna, you're going to get that call. That, yeah. I'm calling it. Right you know now. what? Let's ask the Magic 8 Ball. Should we ask the Magic 8 Ball right. if, yes. if she'll yeah, come like, on your will show? Will it ever happen? It doesn't okay. have to happen today, but like ever. OK, I'm shaking it's so the happening. Ball. That one's happening. Will the duster. Lisa Renna actually come on? And don't give me a bullshit happy answer. Give no, me the uh, oh, no, uh, no, honey, we're all truth. Okay. Okay. So, will she come on behind the velvet rope? Um, wait, I can't see it. Put your glasses on. It, is this cer it says it is certain. <laughs> really? It <laughs> is certain. The magic eight ball has spoken. Okay. Rena, have your people call David's people. Right, like we're in no rush. We could take time and it doesn't have to be this year, but you know, as long as it's some time. All right, we're going to set that up. We're going to make that happen. We're going to manifest I love it. it. Right? Oh my I'll gosh. Take it. David, this has been so much fun for me. I hope you had even iota of a good time. 
I did. We have so much. To, we had just begun to scratch the surface. Music, TV, movies. Like there's so much we could go on. Right. Forever. I know. I feel like I feel like we were all over the place, but uh, it was just such a great time and a great conversation. You are such an interesting person. You know, podcasts aside, like the fact that you've had all these careers and you know all this stuff. I mean, I I would love to get into even more of that. So. And you didn't think I really knew my 80s. So <laughs> I told you, I was like, if I come on, trust me, I can spoof for 80s chatter. I did not. I did not doubt. I did not. Once you said that you had been to the South Fork thing, I was like, oh, he's for real. You're <laughs> he's like, okay, for real. this is the real deal. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So you guys, um, well, I'll let you say it, David. Um, give, give everybody your, uh, your location and, and your 411. Yes, on social, out of all the places you could find me, the easiest is just Instagram at Behind Velvet Robe. That is really me, at Behind Velvet Robe. I accept people. I follow you back. I check DMs, so at Behind Velvet Robe. And if you really want to listen to interviews all week, Behind the Velvet Robe. And some of it's 80s, and most of it is reality TV. And we get dirt. We will get the dirt for you. Yeah, the people people give... David gets them to offer up their own dirt. Like that is, but hey, it's a skill. Truthfully, it's a skill. I am a firm believer in you're only as sick as your secrets, right? Like, why are there even secrets? Like, just, just get let it, out, it out. Just let, let it, it out, out, right? That's People how you are make forgiving. friends. Amen. People are forgiving. Yes. Amen. Um, okay, so thanks everybody for listening, and uh, gosh, we can't wait to do this again with you, David. So. Um, so check out Behind the Velvet Rope and um, and our podcast, uh, Glitter Bee Girls. Um, whatever you're listening on it now, we're also available on YouTube and Apple and Spotify. And um, you can also go to the website, glitterboomgirls.com. Um, so there's a million different ways to find us. I'm Robbie Ann McPherson on the East Coast. And I'm Amy Asberg on the West Coast. Thanks for listening. And thank you, David. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.